Hi, Bill D. Simone with some vintage muscle magazine articles on shoulder training. Now, with the benefit of 40 years of hindsight and easier access to biomechanics and sports medicine, I don't follow everything in these articles, certainly not from a joint friendly perspective. But when I came across them, considering my experience and knowledge at the time, they were certainly motivational and to a degree informative. After these articles, there'll be a look inside the new Kindle where I apply the joint friendly fitness approach to these type routines. Muscular Development Magazine, January 1964, Volume 1, Number 1, with John Grimmick on the cover. This was a sister publication to Strength and Health, which focused more on powerlifting and Olympic lifting and training for sports. Both were published by the York Barbell Company. Now, flipping through the magazine at this point, they hadn't figured out that selling supplements worked better than selling equipment. And overall, it's a pretty conservative design to the pages. Broad shoulders are the mark of a man. I'd categorize most of the text on these two pages as motivational. Nothing of substance training-wise. Top right, Reg Park, supposedly one of Arnold's idols. On the bottom left, Don Haworth, who later became known for his own B-shaped physique. A bit more substance with anatomy drawings and instruction. They make a point of saying there are two ways to broaden shoulders. The first is to develop muscles, and they suggest a standing front raise for three sets of six, prone front raise, four sets of four. Later in the article, they say they add side raises, four sets of six, rear raises, three sets of fives, and they don't really explain why the set rep scheme is different for each exercise. The second way to broaden shoulders, according to the article, is to lengthen the shoulder attachments. So note on the right-hand side, they show the attachments to the clavicle and the scapula and the, quote, drop from the chinning bar. The instruction is to pull up to the chinning position, drop to arm's length, make no effort to resist the drop, drop completely relaxed, and hold the position at arm's length, twisting the body right and left as far as it will go. They also suggest a lateral raise stretch, which is on the right-hand side, face up on the bench. And they say to allow the dumbbells to the floor, raise them about a foot off the floor, and allow them to drop back in order to stretch the rib box and the sternum. Now, I only mention these as part of the times. If you want to keep your shoulders healthy, having the humerus migrate upward into impingement and hyperextending the shoulder with extra weight and encouraging anterior instability are really bad ideas. Here's another dubious idea, the wide grip press behind the neck, which was very common in this 1964-1985 time frame. But we'll finish with a couple of good points they make. One, as you see on the right, is to trim your waist to make your shoulders look broader. And then back in the anatomy drawing pages, they suggest building the side deltoid, not overdeveloping the trapezius, and not overdeveloping the pectorals to help create the illusion of broad shoulders. Ah, yes, the magazine that made my parents ask, what the hell are you getting into? This person, for anyone who doesn't know, went on to be the governor of California and the Terminator, etc., Arnold Schwarzenegger around arguably the peak of his competitive bodybuilding career. Notice the difference between this presentation, which is all Arnold, and the previous, which didn't play up any one bodybuilder and at least attempted to get across some anatomic information. And here I believe we're near the beginning of intensity porn in the muscle magazine pictures. According to the article, and the older I get, the less credible I find them, he worked his deltoids on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for 45 to 60 minutes each workout. He did a warm-up with a 75-pound barbell clean and press for 20 to 30 reps, dumbbell presses with 60 pounds for 15 to 20 reps, then the dumbbell press, 95-pound dumbbells, 85 pounds, 75, 65, 55, each set for six reps, and then one set of bent-over laterals. 45 pounds for 8 to 10 reps. And he repeated that cycle five times. Then he did the lying rear deltoid raise, five sets of 12, and side cable laterals, another five sets of 12, 
not finished. Alternate dumbbell front raises, 50 pound dumbbells, three sets of 12. Then 65 pound dumbbells for side lateral burns. So let's add these up. Two warm up sets, five breakdown sets plus one set of rear delts for five rounds, so 30 sets. 10 sets each arm of one arm raises to the rear and to the side, so 20 more sets. And then three sets plus a burn set, so four more sets. So his shoulder routine, only shoulders, was 56 sets, allegedly. I think I see why he was making faces. And now for something completely different. Mike Menser, who at this time, 1978, was Arnold's main competition to break out into mainstream fame. Yes, that cover is autographed to me. It now resides in the Mike Menser Memorial Museum, curated by my friend John Little. More about John later. This cover is labeled May 1978. And this article actually came out in June 1978 in Muscle Builder magazine. This was from the second wave of articles with Menser's byline. The first wave, about a year earlier, had the tag failsafe. So failsafe arms, failsafe shoulders, etc and was written in a slightly different style. I thought they were ghostwritten. John Little maintains that Mentor wrote them, but in the style of the rest of the magazine. And for the second wave of articles, like this one, he wrote in his own voice. Now the workout listed here follows back and trap work. And his first exercise is, quote, extremely heavy laterals done with a slight cheat to test my strength and satisfy my need for heavy lifting. Interesting choice. 70 pounds for five to eight reps. Moderate weight laterals, supersetted with press behind the neck, six reps plus four reps on each for at most two supersets. This is obviously Nautilus influenced as one of their early stations, the double shoulder, combined exactly these two exercises on one station. So you had one seat, one weight stack, movement arms against the outside of your elbows for the side raise, then parallel handles for the press just by your shoulders so you can go from one to the other with minimal rest. Next exercise is two sets of bent over laterals on pulleys, six reps for plus four reps, and he would do this twice a week. So even allowing for magazine hype, Menser at his most was doing seven sets twice a week, and Arnold was doing 56 sets three times a week. In his later printed material, Mensa would get away from presses of any kind for the shoulders and would get even more minimal on the number of sets to do. This publication tried to fill the gap between the Arnold and the Mensa approaches. From 1985, Secrets of Advanced Bodybuilders, which actually had no advanced bodybuilders in the book, nor was it written by an advanced bodybuilder. It's credited to Health for Life, probably written by Jerry Robinson who wrote several books in this series and then moved on. I recently found him on LinkedIn in an unrelated field. Now I saw these advertised in muscle magazines, but they definitely presented in a more sophisticated way. Where the muscle magazine articles focused on one bodybuilder and one muscle at a time, Robinson took a larger perspective and then drilled down. Instead of photos of bodybuilders, these books went back to drawing, as we saw in the Muscular Development magazine. Today, you could take a photo and digitally drop out the background, but at this time, this way of doing it removed distractions from the exercise instruction. This was a very clean way of presenting instruction, putting the anatomy on the left, right next to the exercise action, using words and a very clear depiction of posture and joint position on the right. Unlike, say, the Arnold and Menser articles, where the pictures are more motivational than instructional. While the instruction is clear, unfortunately, some of it doesn't hold up. For instance, pouring water, which is described on the right-hand side, is another way of saying impingement. Now, these pages, the upright row pressed behind the neck superset. Oh, boy. I did this combination for a while, and what I thought was a good pump was actually swelling. In fairness, I believe in later publications, Robinson got away from this particular combination and pouring water, especially when he did the Rotator Cuff book. The co-author, Joseph Hargan, had written several articles in Iron Man magazine 
in a sports medicine column explaining why pouring water upright rows and press behind the neck was so contraindicated for shoulder health. By the way, what's labeled here as military press is clearly a press behind the neck, again. Uh, a standard conventional exercise, we saw it in the muscular development, the menser, and now here. From what I understand, it's not common today, but there are still some exercise stations around that mimic the same mechanism for injury as the press behind the neck. Here are the shoulder routines from the Secrets book. Notice they start with low sets and get more elaborate. Not as minimal as Menser got, but certainly not 56 sets like Arnold. And if you did a front press instead of the press behind the neck, and you did shrugs instead of upright rows, I think these routines would be useful if you have a wellness plus approach to your program. And by wellness plus, I mean you want to do more than the minimum for health benefits, but not so much that your workout takes over your day. So the routine is at the first level, 21s, which are seven reps each of the side raise, front raise, and bent over raise. The next level is presses, three sets of six to eight, followed by front raises and bent over raises for one set each. And then levels one and two are two supersets of presses and upright rows. Again, I would do shrugs. And one or two rounds of the 21s. These are the pages from the print Joint Friendly Fitness, covering the upright row and the press behind the neck. I rated them two stars out of five, with one being the worst, because while they are problematic as far as shoulder health, the consequences are not quite as catastrophic as missing a barbell bench press and hitting your face with a bar, or missing a barbell step up and falling off a bench with a bar in your spine. So if you must do them, these are the things to consider, but I wouldn't recommend anyone do them. I wrote the exercise instructions in these books specifically to avoid the internal mechanisms for injury. Again, with the advantage of 40 years of hindsight and easier access to sports medicine and biomechanics resources, I do think these articles miss in a few places. I already mentioned the biomechanics. The set rep schemes always left me with more questions than answers. The first article, three sets of six, four sets of four, four sets of six, three sets of five, why different numbers for different exercises? The Arnold article, five sets of 12. Is that with the same weight? Is it a light weight, so it's really a set of 60 with breaks? Or is it breaking down the weight each set? The article suggests both or either. The press behind the neck, if it hurts your shoulders with a broomstick, much less with a weight, could we use the front press instead? Would it have made a difference? Now I've answered these questions for myself to my own satisfaction. But I feel that enough questions from younger trainers, interns, long-time exercisers with new aches and pains to realize that a lot of people still have these questions. The Kindle has an interactive table of contents, so you don't have to read it like a novel. The brand new material is John Little's Forward, Chapter 4, Why to Use Specialized Routines, and Chapters 5, 6, and 7, which are the actual routines. The rest of the Kindle are excerpts from the print edition of Joint Friendly Fitness. I cover two tributes in one screen here, two of my favorite writers, a Menser quote from a Darden book, and the foreword by John Little, who compares me favorably to Green Bay Packers middle linebacker, Ray Nischke. Thank you, John, I'm flattered. Here are a few of the routines from the book. It's a total of 10 to 13, depending on how you count them. It's four shoulder routines, three upper arm, biceps and triceps routines, and three forearm routines. Remember, these are not necessarily bodybuilding routines as much as they are wellness plus routines. Please feel free to ask about the vintage articles in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this. There are clickable links in the description. Shoulder and arm and the full print joint friendly fitness are available now with the ones on the screen coming. And of course, please like and subscribe to the channel and follow me on the Amazon page. Until next time, good luck with the training.